let's start with a definition or two. What does family, I mean, we know what it is in the English dictionary, but what does family mean to you? What does the word family mean to you? Family means history. Family means siblings, my mom, my dad, the grandparents, the ancestors. It's, it's broad in my mind because as I go through my family tree, I know that some of the family members aren't blood, but they're so connected to the family that they are family. So it's, it's not one particular thing that I can say that sort of means family to me. It's a whole connected piece. My name is Son Dianansi, and I am a Guyanese, which also makes me a West Indian, and which also makes me a descendant of someone from a far away land. And who exactly were our ancestors? Where did they live? What did they look like? What were their customs? In short, who are we? In this series of podcasts, we will meet and chat with people from Guyanese and other West Indian communities who have been asking these and other related questions. Who was that great, great, great grandmother and that great, great, great grandfather? As some folks like to say, if you don't know where you're from, then how are you going to know where you're going? Let's get to some of their stories. We begin with Marty of the Lindy family, who grew up along the Burbies River. The Burbies River, as some of you would know, formed the backdrop for one of the great rebellions of the late 18th century, that of Governor Coffey and the 1763 Slave Rebellion. Give us a quick take, who you are, where you're from, sure. that kind of thing. Well, yeah, so as, as mentioned, my name is, is Marty Lindy. Um, originally from um, from Kokwani, Kokwani uh, Burbies, which is a, a bauxite mining industry. And um, we migrated to the U.S., um, in, in 1984, um, I was a, about a sophomore in, in high school at the time and sort of went through, went through my, uh, my high school ages, um, school, school ages there. And then, and then went into college. Um, I went to a technical college and then I went to a four-year college where I, where I was, um, focused on the electronics area, did my under, did my graduate, my undergraduate in, in electronics engineering. And so I was in that industry for a while and, you know, worked through there and have since sort of worked my way into management and um, do a lot of project management and managing a lot of teams around, around, around the world. Um, and now I work, I work within, within the hospitality industry as a, as a project manager. Um, you know, I've got a, got a big family, um, you know, seven, seven, uh, six siblings. Wow. Um, myself, I've, you know, married, I've had four kids okay, and, okay. um, and now just, you know, spend my time between, between work and, and exploring, exploring the, the family. Right. And that's, that's what brought us here today. Right. Um, so Kukwani is a, is a small town on the other end of the Burbies river. Um, I think it's a, it's about, um, 25, maybe 2,500 people. Um, I think when I looked when I looked at the stats back in back in 2000, 
12 or so that that was it and i don't know if it has grown much since i left there in 1984. Mm -hmm. um, right, right. yes okay so where in the were your mom and dad born what what, what part of the so so both of them were born were born in the barbies river mm -hmm. uh my dad my dad was um was in that friendship area and um went to school in a place by the name of sun hills um I, I don't know the mileage difference between it but nonetheless okay. We'll, we'll get and my mom my mom was born in um harakui uh, but grew up in a place called morganstan um and all, all of these are along the barbies river all of these are along the barbies okay. river right i mean the barbies river you know, if uh, if if one was to look at history, was pretty much established right from um, the the from during the Dutch the Dutch right. days as they were um, doing a lot of um, you know planting and, and things like that. Uh, Whether it be um, sugar, and so there was a lot there was a lot of of, of plantations mm -hmm. right um, along the Borbies River, and a lot of these places sort of over time. You know, um, some of the plantations went away, but um, um, villages, you know, villages sort of emerges emerge from from that. Now, in terms of the family tree, um, mm -hmm. now it's Lindy from your dad's side, and what is it from your mom's side? From my mom's side, is it's my mom is Grimmen, Grimmen and Bender. So her, her, uh, my mom's, um, my mom's. Uh, yeah, so Grimmen and Bender, but but I, I I lump them together because they are so, um, you know, just like on my dad's side, it's Lindy and Patwa. You know, his mom's was was Patwa. My my on my mom's side, her father was Grimmen and her mom was was Bender. So, um, okay. Sam. Now, please, just before we go any further, you're going to want to grab a cup of tea or a glass of juice. You may also want to grab a pen and a page from your exercise book as you may encounter a name that either rings a bell or sets off an alarm. And while we're at it, please do remember to like, share, and subscribe. Next up is Aherelda Argyle King of the Chichester family, many of whom originated in the community of Maikoni along the east coast of Demerara. I am Harold de Argyle King and I'm happy to join you today. If you met me as a kid, I would have been in Georgetown, Guyana, attending Bishop's High School in Stellamaris. If you met me in college, that would have been in Louisiana. And if you met me starting my career, it would have been in Disney World or Washington, D.C. So over the years, I've transitioned from being a personal trainer into a lifestyle coach, you now more, more um, latest to being a, an author and the new, I'm about to release my publishing company, helping people to publish that message that's deep inside your heart. Okay. Okay, we see your name on screen, Argyle King, um, but I would have met you as you as you you've been delving into the Chichester family. So tell tell us about that. Tell us where the Argyle meets the Chichester and all that. Wonderful. I believe a part of our identity is determined by who we are and who we came from. And I've had this passion, this deep desire to know who I am knowing who I am in Christ, but also knowing my family lineage. And I think it really began watching Finding Your Roots. That used to be my one of my favorite shows. I love biographies. I love Finding Your Roots. I feel like when people share their stories and when others share their stories, you get an insight. You're like, wow, I didn't know your mother like reading stories the same way my mother like reading the stories. And so mm -hmm. there's this personal exploration of understanding your lineage. And so having come from a family on the mother's side who were Braffits and we always knew who we were. We are the Braffits, we're great, great grandparents came out of slavery. We can identify the village in, in salt and quarantine. We can go back there. We, I knew that. But when I looked on my mother, my father's side, I knew him 
I knew he was an Argyle. And I kind of sort of knew that he had a mother because he had to have a mother, but I didn't know who was her name. He mm -hmm. couldn't remember. And so it was always that place that I didn't know. I had an aunt who grew up in my Coney and she came to town and she would tell us a little bit about her aunt. And she would call the name. She'd look up into the sky and she'd say, yeah, there's Aunt Iris, there's Aunt uh, Aunt pa Pause, pause, just pause. So, something went past me just now. Um, your dad, uh, with regard to his mother, you say he, 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 couldn't, he couldn't recall? He could remember her last name. He remember his mother's last name. And, mm. and still on to today, there is a little bit of what is really her last name. Is it Bob? Is it Walcott? Is it, okay. is it Chichester? So there was all this, this ambiguity in what her last name is because she had different... She came from a lineage of having different other people's names. Mm, okay. um, her siblings had different different names so it was kind of hard to look at that okay. line I, and I, I, I get you I, I, I know that kind of family I, right I you. right yeah. you're okay. right and so Emmeline Chichester was their mom but Emmeline mm -hmm. Chichester had children for different men and so some children had Walcott some children had Bob some you know some people said okay. they were Chichesters you. so I really didn't know them I didn't meet them so my grandmother died at a young age and so essentially my aunt, my older aunts, they became the caretaker of my dad. And he was one of two boys. So okay. for, in terms of information of the family, the Walcotts and the Chichesters, he didn't have a lot. My aunt, who helped raise him, because their mom, Francina Chichester, died early. She had all the information and she lived in Maikoni. She had all the relationships. And so when she would come to town, we lived vicariously through that information. She would just call out the different aunt's name. You're like, oh, there's Uncle Henry and there's Uncle Basil, and all of which are children of Emmeline Chichester. And so I heard them slightly. I couldn't say them back to you. If you asked me, I couldn't repeat them. But when, you, mm -hmm. when I heard it, I would say, yeah, Aunt Selma said. So okay. I didn't have that sense of knowing, but I could say, yes, I've heard that before. And so that was my exposure for the Chichesters. And so I wanted to know more. I wanted to dig deeper, having knowing the importance of family roots. And so I, I jumped into this project. And today, here, here I am. What happened at what point? What did you hear? What did you see that kind of put you on this part of saying, you know, I, I, I want to understand more about my family. I want to learn as much as I could about my family. What, what drew you there? Yeah, you know, if I if if I if I tried to find a point in it, I think I was I don't know, maybe maybe once I made it to the to the US, you know, I started to I started to gain some interest in it and just talking, you know, some of my some of my dad's um older family member, you know, you would hear them talking talking about things. And I think I started just by writing things down in a book. But it was always a struggle, right? Because writing things in a book, it was always hard to kind of keep track and be able to trace things easily. Um, so, so that would sort of be the basis and, and just taking things on, but not very seriously. But I think that one of the things that really got me going in it was when um, I was approached uh, by, by a family member or by a few family members wanting to actually um, do a survey of of some of the properties where my where my mom grew up, right in in the in the Morganstan area, um, wanted to do I think they call it sur um, survey and marking, right? To be able to establish you know what is truly the family the family um, plots or acreage and things like that. And I think it was through there, and this was back in I would say around uh, maybe two thousand four. Um, mm -hmm. that the family had this, had this, um, this thought of, Hey, let's, let's try to, let's try to, you know, maybe, maybe, um, identify what's truly belonging to the, to the family. And I, and, and from there, because you're dealing now with, uh, with descendants, right. And, and as you, right. and I think we came about some documentation that, um, that may have been like a, 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 a living maybe like a living will or something like that, that sort of said, hey, this person has this amount of acreage of land, you know, and upon that, you know, it sort of goes down through the family. 
Sure. And I think it was that 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 started me just getting an interest as to who is who, you know, because you know from Kukwani and and the Barbies River, you hear names all the time, and you you know you're probably calling people uncles and aunts without truly understanding how yeah. they work, how they work. You know, your uncles and aunts, you just sort of inherit that from your from your parents or elders, as they're calling the same people. Um, so I started, I, you know, as we go on this journey, I started documenting and we needed to know who are all of this, this, the, the descendants, you know, and, and these would have been, you know, people at my great grandparents level. And you're trying to find, you know, you're trying to find who the descendants are. And I think it was from that, that really triggered, um, me starting to document, document the, um, you know, all of the relatives and the descendants. Tell us what initially drove you to research your family's history. What about got you started? My father, um, Loris Smart, when I was a child, used to take me with him to go visit all of the different relatives. He was fascinated with finding out more about his own family as his father had been estranged from the rest of the family while growing up, you know, back in, in Guyana. If the, the eldest son was usually given to the grandmother to raise. So he grew up separate from the rest of his 10 siblings. And then they didn't really have a good cohesive sort of relationship because he was like the special son. He was the one they wanted to become a priest. My grandfather said, there's no way on earth he was becoming a priest because he didn't like to say prayers over dead people. So... He left New Amsterdam when he was in his early 20s and went to Georgetown to become a teacher, where he met my grandmother, who was Dogla, or half Indian, for those of you who don't understand what the guy in the term meant. Um, and they got married with no family members present except for a few friends. And then, now he'd been contributing to the family's money by sending money from his salary to his father to help them buy land. But the rest of the siblings didn't know this. So when he came with his wife, he was very happy to show her off. And he was looking forward to getting a piece of land for himself and his wife. They were sort of alienated and not really welcomed. And that sort of turned them off from being connected to the rest of the family. And they moved away after they were being mistreated by some of the family members. So my dad knew that growing up and always wanted to sort of get the family back together. So he would go visit all the great aunts and great uncles and usually drug me along. And I enjoyed listening to the stories and hearing about him as a child. So when he died, I went through a lot of his papers and he had started doing a family tree. He had been asking for information from some of the older relatives. And I sort of compiled everything into the information that I'm going to use in the book that I'm writing. Now, Harelda believes that the Chichesters might well be one of the largest, if not the largest, family grouping in Guyana. Thus far, what have you found out about the Chichesters? Thus far, what we have found out is that the family is huge. And I would go on a limb or a branch or a trunk and say it's probably one of the largest families in Guyana and of Guyanese descent, because the numbers mm. just keep expanding daily, weekly, monthly, literally cousins coming out to the woodwork every day. Right. Just today, 19 cousins pop up. You're like, whoa, 19 cousins. And they come from all walks of life. Some are lawyers, some are doctors, some are teachers, some are carpenters, some are fishers. They come from all these walks of life from all over again. And they look all uniquely different. And so that's the beautiful thing I'm finding out how unique we are, how culturally diverse we are, how we have all these different gifts and talents, and we've lived all over the country. And now today we have these skills that allow us to live all over the world. Originally, our descendants, one was from the UK and one was from Africa. We suspect it might be Nigeria or somewhere on the West Coast. So there's this UK guy and there's this West Coast African woman in Guyana, populating and repopulating, and out of that, there's many. And so here we are today. 
But according to Jacqueline Smart, the Chichesters may well have some stiff competition in numbers. Right, Actually, have... there's, there's a lady who lives in, I think it's New Jersey, named Paul. She's one of our relatives. Mm -hmm. And her family, do you think mine extensive? Mm -hmm. Hers stretches like from one end of the house all the way to the other end. I mean, massive. She has done some, I mean, I look like I haven't started compared to what compared she to her. Yes. By now, you would have noticed that at least two of our guests, Jackie and Morty, seem to be of mixed ancestry. That, of course, is a hot-button issue and one that we will return to time and again. Here is a related story from Basil Butcher Jr., the son of Guyanese and West Indian cricketing great Basil uh, That one's a very good shot and it's gone... For six, yes, six runs it is. And hmm. and and then on, uh, on also on my same my same maternal my maternal grandmother's side, mm -hmm. there's Portuguese somewhere along there in her family because you see pictures of her sister's wavy hair, even though we're dark, their hair is wavy, right? Mm -hmm. And then on my 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 paternal side, my paternal grandfather, who is the stories about. Um, when my dad, because him and his wife, they're living in Port Morant, uh, which is a predominantly uh, Indian sugar state. And when my dad was born, wavy, curly hair, and my grandfather's like, I'm a black man. My wife is a black woman. Oh, my child got wavy, curly hair. Then my aunt, Jean, is born, who I always tell people is the female splitting image of my father. She mm. is the female version. They're, they, you would swear they're twins, both okay. all the way down to the bow foot, right? Mm. She's born, same thing. So my grandfather wondering if he's getting help. That, I remember you telling us the story as a, <laughs> as a little boy. Tell, he was like, uh. if I get help. And he went, he had an older sister, because my grandfather's from Barbados. He had an okay. older sister who was also living in Guyana. And he went to visit her. She lived in Houston, you know, Houston on East Bank there. And um, she said, he was telling her and she said to him, well, you see, you forgot. You may not remember because your mother died when you were a child. Your mm. mother was an East Indian woman from Tobago. So it's coming out in your children. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, because then the third child, my, my aunt, the second aunt, also same thing. You know, and in conversations, um, the reality is, um, a lot of us in Guyana, and I figure um, mm -hmm. it might be the same story in parts of yeah. the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are of ultimately of mixed ethnicity, right? Yeah. Um, now, how do you how, how how do you think? You know, give me your own background mm -hmm. that this reality should play into the conversation that we have had to be dealing with in Guyana, our, rea our reality. How, how can this, you know, con uh, deal, deal with that? One of the questions we certainly would want to address through this podcast is how should someone of mixed ancestry be defined? What's your take? You looked at me and smiled When last you reached to wipe my tears When last you hugged me tight Do the things that feel so right When last you reached to soothe my fears I 
I'm a man of passion as you can see I believe in justice and humanity I'm a man of style, I love to dress Wherever I go I will impress I'm an African, I'm a Indian, East Indian, European Some say Chinese, some say Portuguese But above all, I am Guyanese When last you reached and warmed my heart I am Guyanese And promise me we'll never part When last you hug me tight Do the things that feel so right When last you wish to soothe my fears Well I'm a man of love Dancing power, making fun of life with every hour I'm a man of action, full of ambition Wherever I go, I move with a mission I'm an African, I'm a Indian, East Indian, European Some say Chinese, some say Portuguese But above all, I am Guyanese When last you wished and warmed my heart And promise me we'll never part When last you hug me tight Do the things that feel so right When last you reach to soothe my fears So who am I and who are you? And what's the difference between us two? I want riches, I want fame I want a future to know my name You want riches, you want fame You want a future to say your name Ain't nothing wrong with ambition Ain't nothing wrong with dreams and ambition Ain't nothing wrong with racial pride But hey, can we do it all side by side? Cause we all are We all are God children Cause we all are We all are God's children Cause we all are We are all God's We are all God's children And so our journey has begun. Thanks for being here. And do join us again on Sunday next. Meanwhile, let's leave you in the company of Jackie and her good friend Renita Jewsbury as they battle for mosquito coil supremacy. Jackie? Yes, yeah, so what? It's a whole... You already It's two different things. It's two, 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 two Alright. Yeah, Alright, right. go. Go now. Jackie must be no fiddle. Look what she's going on, country girl. <laughs> 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 Inside a quick red dance, somewhere east, west, not of France. Imagine you are a guy on these, so you know about coconut rice with peas. Imagine you know about the comfort job, and you know how to wiggle and jiggle the digger. Imagine you are a Chinaman, but 
they tell you that your mother was a hope down woman. Imagine. Just imagine. Just imagine. Imagine that you're moving and the movers got you jumping. Imagine that you're jumping and the jumpers got you twisting.